So we will hit. Uh, I want to do just a quick little rundown on on who the Apostle Paul was who wrote this. So we're in Romans chapter one. So and I tell everybody, grab your Bibles and if you get yourself a notepad or like a three ring binder. Put some notebook paper in there and just start writing down notes, man, because there'll be things that you'll go, oh, I forgot about that. So I just want to talk about who Paul was in Romans in Romans 1 1. It says, uh, Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. Separated to the gospel of God. So Paul was called to be an apostle. And why was he called? Who was the guy? Well, you know, he didn't walk with Christ. He was not one of the 12 who walked, out, walked with Jesus and saw Jesus face to face. In fact, uh, so what we do here is when I, when I yell out a scripture, someone's got to grab the scriptures and start reading them as I teach. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of scriptures and people start looking them up. So 2 Peter 1, 2 through 4. Who's got 2 Peter 1, 2 through 4? I can get that one. Okay. 2 Peter 1. And the other one is going to be Acts 7, 58 through 8.3. Acts 7, 58 through 8.3. It was 2 Peter 2, 1 through 4, is that what you said? Uh, 2 Peter 1, 2 through 4. And then I'll get the Acts. What was it again? Acts 7, 58 through 8, 3. What page is that on? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's got Peter? Go for it. You got 2 Peter. I do. <clears throat> Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and, and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises in order that by them you might become partakers of of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. So notice he's given us precious promises that can be multiplied to us in verse 2. That we will escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. So we're going to discover what it is to escape the world's lust and the corruption of it through his divine promises. Okay, Acts. How did Paul how did Paul come on the scene? Look at Acts 7, 58. 58? Okay. Yeah, 7, 58, 3, 3. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. And witnesses laid their robes at the feet of the young man named Saul. They were stoning Stephen as he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with the sin. And saying this, he fell asleep. Saul agreed, uh, you said 8 3, right? Yep. Okay, so Saul agreed with them putting, Saul agreed with putting him to death. On that day, a severe persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout the land of Judea and Samaria. But devout men buried Stephen and mourned deeply over him. Saul, however, was raging, was raving the church, sorry, ravaging the church, and he would enter house after house, drag off men and women, and put them in prison. Okay. Keep your figure there and turn to Acts 22.3 while you're, while you're in Acts. 22.3. <clears throat> yep. All right. Now, now, notice, now notice that Paul was killing people. So Saul was his name. Okay. Brothers and fathers. Oh, go for it. Okay. I am indeed a Jew, born in Tarsus of Sicilia, uh, Cilicia, but brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel. I don't know how you say these words, but taught according to the strictness of our uh, father, according to the 
uh, <clears throat> sorry, I got mixed up there. According to the strictness of our father's law, and was zealous towards God, as you are, you all are today. Okay, so now we find out that in his pre-conversion days, he studied under the the main teacher in Israel, Gamaliel. He was he was a top dude. So he was one of the hand-picked students to be a Jew, to be a Pharisee, one of the top guys. So he was no slouch when it came to uh, persecuting the church, man. He had full papers, he had the full right, and he went after people and he had people killed. So he was a passionate guy. Um, now I want you to turn to Acts 9, 15 and 16. I was just there, so I can read that, too, if you want. Okay. Go for it. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many, th how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Okay, so now we're going to get into something. We're going to find out that Paul suffered greatly for the gospel. So, And Jesus handpicked him and said, you're going to suffer some great stuff, man. You're going to go through it. In fact, uh, the same thing happened to Peter. Turn with me to Luke 22.31. Who's got Luke 22.31? Uh, I can get that on my okay. way. 2231. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. Okay, so Satan was after Peter to sift him as wheat. And this word sift, uh, from Thayer's lexicon in the Greek, it means to agitate, it means to sift. It's on the verge of overthrow, is what it means. So Peter, Satan wanted to have Peter and Paul to the point where he sifted them to the point where they almost fell, the point of overthrow. So we as Christians sometimes get to a point where persecution, hard times, gets us to a point where we think, man, should I give up? Am I going to be overthrow? Am I really going to be sifted to the point where sand comes through my fingers and I just get sifted out there's nothing left? And sometimes that happens to people of God. So the stronger you get and the closer you get to God, Satan's going to want to sift you. So I'm warning you, as you get into Romans and you get past chapter 6, I guarantee you, you're going to go through some trials and tribulations, but if you stand strong, Satan will flee. Because the Bible says that if you resist him, the devil, he will flee. flee. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So he goes after weak people. Satan goes after weak people. So if you stand your ground in the word and he knows you know the word, he goes, dang, I can't get that guy. Can't get him. Okay. And the purpose of Satan is to destroy faith. So this whole purpose, if he can make your faith unproductive in your service through hard times, then he's won. And our example is Paul, shipwrecked, beat, stoned, Peter, crucified upside down. Uh, you know, Peter, you're going to deny me three times before the cock crows. And then what happens? Jesus restored him. So these are, these are part of the Christian faith. And a lot of people think that because they go through persecution, they're living in sin. Well, that's not, that's called living in persecution, that's sin. So a lot of times people... Agreed. Think, go ahead, what? Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, people think when they go through a hard time, they might be living in sin. That's not true. It means they're walking with Christ in a, in a tight fashion. Walking with Christ tightly. Okay. Paul was sent to the Gentiles. Even though he was a Jew... He was sent to the, to the Gentiles, and he converted thousands of people. 
So I want to, I want to show you what happened to Paul. So go to Galatians 1, 6. Galatians 1, 6 through 2, 6. Who's got that? Galatians 1 what? Galatians 1, 6 through 2, 6. Gotcha. I am amazed that you are so quickly turning away from him who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to different a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but that there are some who are troubling you and want to change the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel other than what we have preached to you, a curse be upon him. As we have said before, I now say again, if anyone preaches to you, a gospel con contrary to what you received, a curse will be on him. Okay, now look at He says there's no other gospel. There's only one gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus Christ died and he rose again from the dead and he shed his blood for our sins. That's the gospel. If anybody preaches anything else, let him be accursed, he said. That's was strong he, language. Was he directly... Um, Talking about the Gnostic Gospels as well that were kind of coming out around this time, or yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay, so that yeah. this is one of the the passages he's actually directly um, rebu rebuking those Gospels, right? Yep, yep. Okay. Okay, keep, and uh, if you guys have any questions, just jump in there because I'll just keep on going. Okay, keep on going. Watch this. Ten. So for I am trying to win the fa or the favor of people or God. Oh, sorry. For am I trying to win the favor of people or God, or am I striving to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a slave to Christ. Now I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel preached by me is not based on a human point of view, for I did not receive it from a human source, and I was not taught. But it came by a revelation from Jesus Christ. Okay, now notice this. No man taught him. This is what most most people miss. He says, no human taught him. He says, but it became through revelation by Jesus Christ himself. Well, he didn't walk with Christ. He was not uh, he was not part of the twelve. So look what happened. Okay, keep on going. Now watch this. Thirteen. So four I've before you have heard about my former way of life in Judaism, I persecuted God's church to an extreme degree and tried to destroy it. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many uh, contemporaries among my people because I was extremely zealous for the traditions of our of my ancestors. But when God, from the from my mother's womb, set me apart and called me by His grace, was pleased to reveal His Son in me. So that I could preach him among the Gentiles, I do not immediately consult with anyone. Okay, now no, no, he didn't cons he didn't talk to anybody. He didn't go after anybody. But watch what happened. I did not go up to Jerusalem to those who had become apostles before me. Instead, I went to Arabia and came back to Damascus. So, so we know he went to Arabia, right? Now look what happened. How many years he was he was gone? 18, then go after, ahead. Yeah. Then after three years, I did go up to Jerusalem to get to know Seth, Cephas, and I stayed with him for 15 days. But I did not see any of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Now in now in what I write to you, I am, I am not lying. God is my witness. Afterwards, to the regions of Syria and Sicily, Sicilia, I remained personally known to the Judean churches of Christ. They simply kept hearing, he who formerly persecuted us now preaches the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. Then, after 14 days, I went up to, again to Jerusalem with Bar uh, Barnabas, Barnabas, yeah, Barnabas. Taking, taking Titus along also, I went up because of the revelation and presented them to the gospel I preach among the Gentiles, 
but privately to those recognized as leaders, so that I may not be running or have have run in vain. But not even Titus, who was with me, though he was a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Okay, let's, was, stop, let's, let's stop there for a second. Okay, now notice. He said in verse 2, 2, 2, and I went up by revelation and communicated to them that gospel. So we understand that there was a revelation that took place. And we know it was by Jesus Christ. But now we discover that Paul not only was not taught by man, but he was taught by Jesus Christ and by revelation. 